today in the bulletin. And that's because as I wrestled with the sermon, I think I wrestled even more with the title. See, not every difficulty in life is meant to be prayed away. I want that sentence to settle in your spirit. As we listen from Paul, he tells us that we will all be afflicted. We will all have trouble. But that's just in this world. We do not live in this world. We live for the next world. We live for God's kingdom. And there, there will be no trouble. There will be no persecution. There will be no affliction. Jesus told his disciples in the Gospel of John, as we read, in this world you will have trouble. That's not an opening line that a lot of us want to hear, especially as you're standing at the altar in your marriage. In this world, you will have trouble. Anyone who has children, or who has family, or has ever held a job, or has actually ever breathed, has experienced trouble. I love the analogy that Jesus uses when he talks about the despair and the pain, but the joy. Did you notice out of all the examples he could have used, he used a woman giving birth to a child. For all of you moms that are out there, that wasn't like a fun process, was it? Were you skipping your way to the hospital and joyously anticipating the pain that you're going to endure to bring forth your child? No, oh, you felt trouble. You felt pain. But you knew the end result. And Christ says, just as a woman experiences pain and anguish and labor, it is turned into joy at birth child. As I talk to the kids about the things that God has gifted them with, the things that they have trouble with, I thought of those labor pains. What does it say? Nothing is worth doing if it's not worth doing good. And usually if it's worth doing good, it's not easy, is it? Well, what I forgot at home was my juggling balls. That's what I actually was going to be the illustration today for the children's sermon. I've wanted to juggle. I've always wanted to juggle. And I could think of all the sermons and all the talks that I could do revolving around juggling and keeping all the balls going and up in the air. And out of all the things that God has gifted me with and things that come so easy and I could just mow right through it, do you think I could juggle? No. And I tried, and I worked on it. But no matter how hard I try, the balls just keep falling to the ground. Now, one would be tempted to say, "Out oh, of heck with it, that's too hard. That's trouble. I don't have time for that. Just quit. But see, I think there's more of a message there than what appears at the surface. I keep going back to those balls keep picking them up, because I know God has a message there. See, life isn't always easy, and not trying to balance all those balls in the air is not an easy task. If everything was easy and we could do it all on our own, would we need God? If we never had trouble, if we never had things bring us to our knees, we ever have reason to look up? I don't think so. Jesus is saying some hard words to his disciples. Now, you have to realize that when these Gospels were written, they were written over 60 years after Jesus had died. So these are the stories and, and the words that have been passed down, the ones that were so important that they still made it into the Scriptures. He had been speaking figuratively to them because he knew that their minds couldn't grasp what he was saying. We're looking at everything post-Jesus. What was written 
you have to put yourselves in the disciples' shoes that they were hearing all of this firsthand, and it was foreign, and it was different, and it was hard. So then he tells them, in a little bit, I'm not going to be speaking so figuratively. I'm going to tell you, and your eyes will be opened, and you're going to get it. Did you notice that cool part at the end of that scripture? They said, finally! <laughs> you're not speaking in figures of speech. You're not speaking in parables. We get it. We understand what you're saying. Now we know that you are the Son of God. Have you ever thought about that? How many times throughout the scriptures that you've heard that from various disciples or all of them? Now we know that you are from God. Now we know that you are the Son of God. And yet here it's been said many, many times throughout his ministry, and we come right up to the very end. And we have them saying again, now we know that you are the Son of God. That may seem a little weird, but is it? Don't we constantly have to keep reminding ourselves of what is true when life gets tough, when we face those difficult times? We have to keep reminding ourselves, yes, I know the truth and I get it, and I have to be reminded because life is just too hard the way it is. I want you to think about maybe moments in school. Maybe it was moments in college or in your marriage. Maybe it was those times that you experienced with your family that were so tough. That you had no control over. And you felt helpless. Maybe you experienced times at work, times when you were beat up on things you did not do that, were, that you were accused of, that was not your fault, or, or just circumstances, politics were such that you just could not hold up under the weight of that trouble. And yet God gave you perseverance. God built your character. God put you on your knees to strengthen that relationship with him. I want to go back to the first statement I made. Not every difficulty in life is meant to be prayed away. Is that something you hear in our culture? Think about it. The minute something happens, what do we do? We immediately start praying, and that's fine to pray, but what do we pray? Lord, take this from me. Lord, heal me. Lord, make it all better. Lord, give me money. Lord, get rid of this pain in my side. Lord, get rid of the people I don't like. <clears throat> Am I the only one that's ever said these things? Lord, life's too tough. I don't want to do it. Lord, just help me get out of bed. Because <laughs> life's too tough. I want to put a spin on that. See, the reason why we have trouble is because God uses those situations or those people that he's put in your life that you may not like, that may be a thorn in your side, or you may be frustrated with, to grow you up, to build your character, to give you opportunities to grow stronger, to be more loving, to be more patient, to be more kind, to be more wise. See, we're not meant to stay in the same place. If you're still complaining about the same things that you were complaining about 5, 10, 15 years ago, I'm here to tell you, you need to grow up. God has put those things in our life to learn from, to grow from come out victorious and joyful on the other side. See, every challenge, every offense, every delay, every person that's difficult to deal with is an opportunity to be refined by the Master's fire. To 
allow us to grow in character. And as your character is developed, God can trust you with more influence and more responsibility. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever taken the time to think that the very difficulty, the very tough thing that's sitting right in front of you has been put there so you can overcome it so he can give you the next big thing? But we can't see the next big thing because we're stuck at the wall of the difficulty. My challenge to you today is to ponder in your heart those things that are still bugging you and seem really tough. They seem like a lot of trouble. And then I want you to take that before God and say, what do I need to do to get to the joy? Grow me up. Build my character. And make me the person that will come out on the other side looking at eternity smile instead of a frown in front of the